In this video, I want to talk about finding the domain and range when you have real-world scenarios or application problems. In these cases, the domain and range can also be affected by what makes sense in real-world contexts. Let's look at two examples to see what I mean. In the graph below, we see data for six different years and the percentage of Americans 12 or older who have listened to a podcast ever or in the past month for each year since 2013. We want to consider the domain and range for this scenario. And in fact, we're only going to look at uh, capital M, the percentage of Americans 12 or older who've listened to a podcast in the last month for each of these years. We're going to let T be the number of years since 2013. On the graph, we have 2013, 20. 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, and 2018. That's going to correspond to time equals 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, the number of years since 2013. If we look at the y values of the data, that is the percentage of Americans who've listened to a podcast in the past month, it's 12%, 15%, 17%, 21%, 24%, and 26%. First question is, what is the domain if we only consider the data on this graph? So if we only consider the data on this graph, we're just looking for the t values, the domain values, and we have t values between 0 and 5, including 0 and 5. So we could say 0 is less than or equal to t is less than or equal to 5, or in interval notation, bracket 0, comma, 5, and then a right-hand bracket. What's the range for this data if we only consider the data on the graph? Well, the lowest y value we have is 12%, and the highest y value we have is 26%. Now, we're not really talking in y values, we're talking in this M value, this capital M, the monthly listeners. And so we could say 12 is less than or equal to M of T is less than or equal to 26, or we could write that as an interval left bracket 12 comma 26 right bracket. So for this first set of interval notation, zero to five with brackets, we were looking at T. And for the second set of interval notation, 12 to 26 with brackets, we're looking at capital M. There we were looking at only the data we saw, but what if we were to consider that this experiment will move forward into the future? Then what would be our new domain and range? Well, our lowest time value is still time zero, 2013. And instead of ending at time five, we're just gonna let it continue on forever. So our new time is just time is greater than or equal to zero, or left bracket zero comma infinity. What's the range if we continue to measure this data forever? And this is where you have to be really careful. Because the graph is increasing, you might consider, oh, it increases forever. It's just M is greater than or equal to 12. But the percentage of Americans who have listened to a podcast in the last month can't be greater than 100%. So it's going to stop at 100% if it ever reaches that. Also, you have to consider that something amazing and new might come out. We might stop listening to podcasts altogether, the data could actually go down. So it could go back down to zero. So the range that we have to look at here for the percentage of monthly listeners is actually from a lower end of zero to an upper end of 100 with brackets on both ends because it could theoretically be zero podcast listeners. And it could theoretically be 100% of Americans listening to podcasts. So that's the range if we continue to measure into the future. It's really important to let your reader know whether you're looking at values only within the span of the data you have or whether you are continuing out to the future and considering all possible values you could have. Got another graph for you to look at. In this graph, we see the number of people in the world in millions who are using the internet each year from 2004 to 2018. Now, you might be surprised to know that not everybody in the world actually uses the internet. In 2018, it was estimated that 3,896 million people use the internet, but the population of the world in 2018 was around 7 billion or 7,000 million. I want you to go ahead and do the same experiment with this graph. Now, I've defined a couple of variables for you for this graph. We're going to let t be the numbers of years since 2004. That's the first bar you see on the graph, so that's going to be time zero. And then we're going to move on time one, two, three, four, five, etc. So the year 2018 corresponds to time 14. We're going to let capital U be the number of users of the internet in the world in millions. That 
that starts at 914 million users in 2004, and it ends at 3,896 million users in 2018. It is pretty steadily increasing between those two values. I want you to give this a try. State the domain and range using only the data shown on the graph, and then state the domain and range as if you were going to move forward and continue to measure this number. You may have to do a little research to decide what the range could actually be as you move forward until the year 2025. Pause this and give it a try. And we're back. If we only consider the data shown on the graph, let's write the domain and range. For the time, that would be an interval starting with left bracket zero and ending with 14 right bracket. For the number of users, the range, we have a lower value of left bracket 914 and a high value of 3,896 right bracket. All right, but what if we move forward in time until 2025? Well, 2025 is 21 years after 2004, which means that the time would span from 0 to 21. In terms of the number of users of the internet worldwide, it's possible that this number continues to go up to the maximum population in 2025. Now, if you did just a little bit of research, you might see that it, the estimated population for 2025 is somewhere around 8.1 billion. So we could say that it, we could get up to a high of maybe 8.1 billion or 8,100 million. That gives us the right side. What do we put on the left side? Well, it's possible that everybody in the world starts to use the internet, it is also theoretically possible that everyone in the world stops using the internet. Maybe something better replaces it by 2025, or maybe there's a catastrophe. Technically, the number of users could go down to zero because we simply don't know what happens in the future. So to be safe, I'm going to put my lower value of this at zero. So for the range of this graph, for the users of the internet in the world in millions, I'm going to say left bracket zero comma 8100 right bracket. 